Hello trumpet players, we got a request for a video about breathing on the Allstate Etudes. Breathing can be tricky on these because there are places where the tempo is quick and there's no normal place to breathe. So, for example, in the first etude, we have the phrases all end with an eighth note. Right? That pattern, it goes throughout. And it's really not a good idea to breathe after that eighth note. Now, we'll talk about this later. You can if you absolutely must, but it's just not a good idea. So now, what we wanna talk about before we get into the details here is if you don't know how to do a catch breath, it's time to learn now. So a catch breath is when you fill your lungs uh, in like half of a beat. Right, so you're you're playing along. See, I'm 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 filling up in half of a beat, and so that's something you want to learn. If you can't do that already, and it has to do with how open you are, and you know what, a lot of times the reason why people can't take in a full breath that quick is because they play closed already. I'm a firm believer that your breath in should be the same as your playing out, but in reverse, right? So, and you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, that opens a whole can of worms that you probably weren't asking for. Whoever requested this video, I'm sorry, I forgot who it was. Um, but let's talk about that too. Um... If you're doing something odd to breathe, something unnatural, it's gonna slow your breathing down. So just breathing in general, the way I approach breathing is everything that you do to play, but in reverse. Okay, see how my body is moving, right? Now, Maybe your body doesn't move that way, but whatever your body does to move as you're expelling your air, move in the opposite direction to bring the air back. Now, there are some people say, move out your belly as you breathe. Big X, no, don't do that. Uh, if you were my student, I would be telling you don't do that, okay? Um, pick up your shoulders, expand your rib cage. Uh, no. Don't do that. If you're my student, not doing that, okay? Because it's not natural. What We want our breathing to be whatever our playing is, but in reverse. That's the only thing that makes any sense. That's, and by the way, the, way I, the reason I figured that out was because there was a note that I kept cracking after a breath on, a, it's the backstage solo for Pines of Rome. I kept taking a breath, squee at the top note, right? There's, like, I think, an A that comes in after the breath. Um, and I kept cracking it. And the reason I was cracking it was because the way I was breathing was so contrary to the way I play. And that's where I got this from, is you want to breathe <sighs> the opposite of what you play then there's no wasted movement. That's why we're talking about this now, because we were talking about catch breath, okay? But you can't do a true catch breath if you have wasted movement in your breathing. So you want, that's why we want the, the inhale to be exactly physically, in terms of form and musculature and all that, we want it to be the opposite the the not the opposite the reverse of the 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 exhale 
So when you're playing, do that in reverse to breathe. Okay, so you can't, I know I spent a lot of time on that, but it's very important. You cannot do a catch breath if you're doing weird stuff to breathe. Okay, now, um, that said, let's look at some details. We're going to look at three different categories of breath. Now, I have um, what some people consider, I don't think so, but other people have told me that I have an unusually long uh, breath span. Um, that comes from a combination of two things. Uh, one is efficiency, and I, I, I um, caution you that my definition of efficiency is not like some other people's definition of efficiency, okay? My definition of efficiency is that you can uh, play better with less effort, okay? So, and I know some people think that's what they believe, but it, it's weird. But anyway, um, and in terms of air, um, you, you get longer phrases if you're more efficient. So, but you know what? Efficient doesn't mean small. I think that's the problem with, with what I've heard other people say. This is not efficient. Uh, imitating bad playing, right? Sorry. Playing small like that doesn't mean that you're playing efficient. That's just like, I don't know, that's just dumb. Okay? Um, efficient. Now, the, the epitome of efficiency is when the notes resonate. Once you hit the resonant pitch of the trumpet, you don't have to work so hard to make, and to me, that is the essence of, 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 um, that is the essence of efficiency. That's how you become more efficient. It's not by relaxing this and, and all that stuff. It's not through relaxation. It's through intonation, believe it or not. That's how you become more efficient, is you become better in tune with the horn. That means you're more resonant. Okay, so if you want to be better at playing longer phrases, play better in tune. That sounds like it has nothing to do with breathing. It has everything to do with breathing. All right? If you play more in tune, better in tune with the horn, okay, and I'll have to make a whole different video to talk about that. But if you play resonantly, you will not use as much air to play. It takes less air to make the sound. Okay, so yeah, tuning can give you a longer breath span. Okay. Um, and then the other side of that is to have uh, more air that you can use, right? And I, I have both of those things going for me. So some of these problems in these etudes uh, have, were not as difficult for me as someone who doesn't have those two things going for them. All right, but you want to, in, in a general sense, you want to work towards that. All right, so now, so we're going to look at three different kinds of breathing. One, um, where I breathed in the etudes on the, on the video. Uh, two, other places I could have breathed but didn't. And number three, the category, third category is places you could breathe in an emergency. Okay? So looking at etude one, the first place I breathed, and I don't, when I'm using measure numbers, I don't include the pickup measure, so I only use full measures. I don't know how other people do it, I only use full measures. So the eighth Full measure is an obvious place to breathe, and I breath, breathe there. Um, the next place I breathed was in measure 22. Obvious place to, oh wait, no, that's not as obvious. Okay, that was a catch breath. Uh, like I told you, this thing goes on and on and on without any quarter notes to breathe after. Uh, next place I breathed. Oh, let me talk about that. I took 
some stylistic liberties. And we're going to talk about how this works with um, the competitions. All right. But let me show you how I worked out measure 31. I actually brought the tempo to a halt and then started because that's what made the most sense to me. Now, I'm going to back up. I'm just going to start here. See what I did? There is no rule against that. Now, if there, so in terms of competition, and we're going to talk about this more when in that third category of breathing, okay? But in terms of competition, you don't know who the judges are, and whoever tells you that there's one right way to do it is lying, okay? There, when it comes to breathing, there are different things that people like and if you don't do it their way, depending on what kind of judge they are, either you're on their side or you're not on their side, right? They might give you bad, you know, a, a, a lower score if they don't like the way you breathe, if it's like really standing out. Um, but you can't control that. So what it comes down to, and this is a, you know, I just made a video and I'll link to it here. I just made a video about the human connection. We're not in the competition to show everybody how good we are. We're there to make a human connection. You don't win by showing everyone how good you are. You win by making a connection to the judges. All right? So, and I, you know, you just watch that video. You'll understand what I'm saying. Now, we don't want to we don't want to try to second guess what breathing the judges prefer there's no way to know that anyway even if you could find out and this is like stupid even if you could find out beforehand who's to say that they're not going to now cancel and someone else is going to judge right so you just can't second guess what the judges want so what you have to do is what sounds good to you Breathe in a place that sounds good to you. Breathe in a way that sounds good to you. And that's what sounded good to me. As I slowed down, stopped the tempo, took a nice big breath so I would be fueled up for the next section. And then I went on. All right? That's important. I, I think that's really, really important. We don't want to put playing it right above playing it well. And what I mean by well is, is expressing ourselves. Okay, never ever ever put playing it right in these in these in this sense, right? All right, so the next place I breathed was in measure 39. That's a no brainer. Took 43, no brainer. And 49, that was a catch breath. Okay. Um we're getting from from 43 to the end, there's no place to breathe. You have to have a catch breath. Uh if you want to play this at tempo throughout except for where it says to slow down you're gonna have to take a catch breath you're gonna have to what I started the video with the the breathing in one half of a beat like that okay um, now I go from there to the end so the second category of breathing that you could breathe where I didn't breathe uh, there's not much of them in this etude in fact I don't see any I have marked these earlier. I took all the ones that you can take. Okay, so now let's go jump to the third category. We'll do second categories on the other ones. The third category where you could, and I'm not going to give you specifics, but you can breathe, and you have to decide what you want. You can take a catch breath after one of those eighth notes in the phrase. <laughs> You see what I'm doing? Taking that breath after the 16th note. Now, um, some people will argue that it's better to take a breath after the quarter note and just break the slur. Uh, okay. 
okay? I don't like that one. But some people, that's what they like. And that's what my point was earlier. And I told you we were talking about this in the third category of breathing. Um, you have to do what sounds good to you. You can't second guess what the judges are going to prefer. If you have to take, I call these emergency breaths because they don't fit. They don't sound good, but you can at least do them and, you know, at least work it out somehow. Um, but yeah, I would much rather breathe after the eighth note. And I actually do that in measure 22. I actually do that. Okay, I actually do that there because there's nowhere else to do it. All right. So I hope that answers for your questions for A21. Let's look at A22 real quick. So where did I breathe? Measure three, measure five, measure eight, measure 10, measure 11, measure 14, 16, about almost every other measure. Because really it's an eight, right? So it's practically the same thing as every four measures. Measure 21, though, that's where I breathe. Those are the most obvious places to breathe, right? Um, now let's look at places where I could have breathed but chose not to. Measure six after the tide quarter. Right, you see that? I could have also breathed in the following measure, measure seven. You see that? Okay, another one you could, I could have breathed and you can breathe if you need to. Um, in measure 12, there's two places and I'll breathe in both of them. I'm gonna end up hyperventilating here. Um, but anyway, here. the tide eighth note and you can do that if you have to uh, next where can you get a legitimate breath measure 19 which is just like measure six so I won't play that measure 20 is just like measure seven I won't play that um, you can do in measure 22 <laughs> those tied notes all right so those are the second category breaths where I could have breathed but chose not to um, now let's talk about where you can breathe if you have an emergency um, now one thing I didn't mention in the other one we don't want to break phrases that's my that's my thing breathing and phrasing go hand in hand in fact some people don't even know what phrasing is and they call phrasing breathing I mean they call breathing phrasing because they've never played a phrase before. They, they were never conscientious of phrasing before. So, um, yeah, so when they say, uh, make sure you phrase here, well, they actually mean, um, make sure you breathe there. Uh, and I'm, mostly uneducated musicians that say that kind of thing, and I don't mean uneducated in a derogatory sense, okay? I'm talking about, musicians who are great musicians who I've had the pleasure of working with I mean you know uh, you know top-notch players but they're not college educated so they don't use the same lingo that we use okay so anyway uh, so yes I don't like to break a phrase so that's the and that's more important on the slow etude than it is on the others but it's still important on the fast etudes too so in this one you can because there are so many syncopated notes and if you don't know what syncopation is look it up um, it's always nice to breathe after a syncopated note um, and in general in this piece there's so many of those that you could breathe after. It's not even worth 
pointing them out, right? So that's where I would do, if you had to do more than the ones I just mentioned, it's almost every measure, <laughs> but if you have to do more than that, if you do have to do more than that, you've got issues, okay? <laughs> um, you might want to consider figuring out why you ha can only play one measure of music before you have to breathe, all right? That's not good. All right. Next, the third etude. First category of, of breathing, I breathed in measure eight. I didn't breathe again until measure 22. And that's a lot. But once again, it's because of the rhythms and the phrasing. I, there was no place to breathe. And since I can breathe that, that go that far without a breath, I did. I, you know what, to tell you the truth, I wasn't thinking about breathing when I, I had to actually watch the, my sound recording stuff just crashed. Um, so you're gonna, it's gonna sound different right now because this is coming straight from the camera. I don't like the, the sound on the camera. All right, but I'm gonna keep going just because I don't want to have to do this all over again. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, talking about the rhythms and the phrasing. Uh, there's, there aren't any natural places to breathe fr from measure eight to measure 22. You can breathe in that middle section. You can breathe after any of those um, quarter notes, but we're not there yet. Let me let me get to measure 29. I breathed. It's after a quarter note. 35. I breathed after a quarter note. Why did I pick those two um, quarter notes? Because they're at the end of the phrase. You actually finish the phrase, take a breath, go on to the next phrase. Okay. All right, next, what am I looking at? For, uh, 41, I actually came to, I did a sort of uh, a measure 41, I did a retardando. Remember I told you, you can do that as your interpretation, as part of your interpretation. So I went, taka taka ta ba 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 because I couldn't get there's no place to breathe from there to the end of the, the cut, right? I couldn't get big, of a, big enough of a breath to get to the end. So I slowed down there so I could take a bigger breath and finish it. All right? Now, let's look at other possible places to breathe besides where I breathe. We're looking at measure 23. That's a good one. Measure 25 after the quarter note. Measure 27 after the quarter note. Measure 33 after the quarter note. Though all those quarter notes are fair game. After that, there's no more. So what do you do? Now we're in third category. Emergency breaths. And a lot of you are going to have to take emergency breaths. So once again, I'm going to remind you, keep it in the phrase. Use, breathe between, between phrases. Don't break up a phrase. Okay, and sometimes that means doing that kind of retardando that I did. So like for example, the first one you might want to consider is um, See what I did? I breathed right there before that 16th note run, right? I retard on note. This is the, the end of measure three. I put a retard on note on the end of measure th uh, uh, line three. I'm sorry, I said measure three. The, the last measure of line three, I put a small retard on note there, took a breath, taka 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 taka, right? And started that phrase. That way I could get through that whole phrase. If, if I was having air issues, I would be able to get through that phrase. All right, so that's really what I would do. I would much rather, as a judge, if I'm your judge, I would much rather hear the full phrase. Do your retard on though, and then take a nice big breath so I can hear the music that you have to share with me. If you try to keep it in tempo because that's how it goes, and you blotch the breathing, 
You know that breathing can screw everything else up. Breathing, I mean, think about it. You're not getting air to your brain, right? So, um, so it's not just a, a physical issue. There are physical issues, right? For example, in that other etude, um, why did I not do the one right before the B flat? Because I don't like to, to unset right before a, a, a higher note. I know I'm weird like that, but uh, if you unset, if you take a breath and then go up, you're more likely to crack. That's why I don't. Well, plus it's also in the middle of the phrase. But but yeah, I would never, I would never choose to breathe right before a high note. I know a lot of people do that, not me. I I, I don't like that. Um, I would much rather you know, he man it all the way through that phrase and get to the top note and then breathe after that. Alright, so um, so that's one of those places where I would do a retardando and and, and do an emergency breath there. Um, and then I would do it again right before the the sixteenth note section at the end. Um, see that so just there's nothing wrong with doing a retardando when you have to breathe if you make it sound good you make it sound musical there's nothing wrong with that all right so that's the three categories of of, of breathing that we have here we've got where I breathe which is you know a lot of students can't do that but then we have where where it makes sense to breathe and then we have the emergency breaths and if you have questions about any of these I think this is a good suggestion I forget I'm sorry I forgot who suggested it who, um, but this is a good suggestion for a video uh, sorry it took me so long to make it but there you go if you have any questions ask below and if you have any suggestions for videos that you think I could make for you, go ahead. I have my own list, but I put you guys' videos at the top of my list. Alright? So, um, for now, anyway. That's not going to always be that way. But for now, because of the Allstate thing, um, I've got... I may not do this in other years, but for this year I wanted to do like an all-state series and you guys helped me with that by giving me ideas what to uh, help you with, right? So there you go. If you have questions about any of this stuff, like the, the breathing and stuff like that, I mean like the physical way that you breathe, uh, please ask below. Other than that. We'll see you on the next video. Uh, God bless you.